Yep, that's what I'm talking about. There it is, in person, guys. West Lawn Cemetery in Canton, Ohio. Frankenstein's grave. And look at the dates on these. 1861 to 1955. 1861 to 1935. Frank Lloyd Frankenstein. 1877 to 1949. So yes, guys, today we are starting a new challenge, running from Frankenstein. And it's beginning right here at Frankenstein's grave. Is this the Dr. Frankenstein? No one knows. In fact, the story of Frankenstein has been told so many times in so many different ways that nobody knows whether it's true or not. Actually, it's not true. <laughs> the origin of the story of Frankenstein is actually the most interesting part, in my opinion. The story was actually written in 1818 by Mary Shelley, and the way that it came to be is that her and four of her writer friends were sitting around and they were like, hey, let's see who can come up with the best ghost story. And she came up with what would become the story of Frankenstein. Now, a common misconception is that Frankenstein is the name of the monster, when in fact, Frankenstein is the name of the doctor who built the monster. Sometimes he's referred to as the creature, but either way, Frankenstein is not the name of the monster. By the way, if you wanna find this cemetery in Canton, Ohio, it's right behind the McKinley Monument. I like this cemetery because there are a lot of interesting mausoleums and statues. It's really fun just to walk around here and look at all this stuff. The story that Mary Shelley wrote back in 1818 is actually much different, much deeper, much darker, because it was 1818 and a lot of things were different back then. The story that most people know probably comes from the 1930s movie. Ooh, look at this one, guys. Look at that. Look at the door on that thing. Let's just go take a peek in. Wow. Cemeteries are so creepy. Look at the rust on these bars. Pretty cool. Basically, Dr. Frankenstein was a scientist who was obsessed with seeing if he could build a human. So he and his assistant went out at night looking for fresh bodies of people who had just been hanged, digging up graves, and looking for body parts to use to build this human. After they got everything they needed, the only thing left was a brain. So Dr. Frankenstein sent his assistant to the local school where they were doing some experiments on a healthy brain and a criminal's brain. He was explicitly instructed to bring back the healthy brain, but he dropped it and damaged it, so he ended up bringing back the brain of the criminal. Now, if the story truly got horrific from here, you would be able to look back and go, oh my god, it's because he got that criminal's brain. And the monster does end up killing several people, but it's not because he's crazy, it's more of like a misunderstanding. I mean, the monster is built from several people's body parts. All he can do is grunt and growl, and people mistake that as him attacking them. The the monster is enormous, and when they come after him, he kills them. They think he's attacking them, he thinks they're attacking him. Craziness ensues. The monster is actually more childlike than anything. And he's certainly not some crazy murderous beast. But he gets labeled as such, mostly because at one point he's down by this river, he meets this little girl, and they play this game where they're throwing flowers into the water. When they run out of flowers, Frankenstein throws the girl in the water. What in the world? The townsfolk grab their torches and pitchforks. They lure him to a lighthouse where they lock him in and that's pretty much the end of the story. He can no longer get out to harm anybody and as movies went back in those days, that was enough. <laughs> Actually, I don't remember if that's exactly how it ends. It's been quite a while since I've seen that version of the movie, but I did just order it in 4K from Amazon, so I'm gonna be watching it as soon as it comes in. Guys, tell Telling this story while walking around a graveyard is so spooky. Now, if the sun weren't out, it would make it much better, but I'm not about to come out here at night. If you want to watch a really fun video I made a few years back in this same cemetery, I'll link it below. People actually come out here and leave pumpkins and things on Frankenstein's grave. But here comes the Hummer. I've already done about two miles walking around this cemetery, so I'm going to wrap up this segment. Let's go home and talk about what this challenge is truly about. So my basement is kind of a mess right now. I've been doing some rearranging down here. I moved my desk from over here to over here. And I have this little area here to get back inside there 
to the chair. How crazy is that? But I still have my scream wall up here with all of my ghost face masks and my uh, Sleepy Hollow and Pendle Witch Trial badges right here. And at the moment, the plan is to keep that right there and keep hanging these medals on each of the ghost faces as we earn them. But this is what we're talking about here right now the one that is in this pacer box. And as we already discussed a little bit about, this challenge is Frankenstein's Trail. This is a 54 mile challenge. And with the walking I just did at the cemetery this morning, that actually brings me to 31 miles already. That's right, guys. I've already been on the treadmill. I've been out walking. I've really been huffing it to get this one done. I started it right after the Pendle Witch Trail. I set it for two weeks, which means that I have four days and 21 miles to go. And as with the others, as soon as we finish this one, it will be going right up here on the third ghost face right here, the purple one. Here's what's happening right now. The challenge ended short of a half a mile. It kept counting though. It shows that the challenge is over, but I still have to finish a half a mile. And since it's still counting, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that half a mile so I can officially say that I finished this challenge. <laughs> I'm about dead. I've done 12 miles today. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. My feet are killing me. I'm getting blisters. My knee is killing me. And I gotta babysit all day tomorrow. All right, there it is. 0.5. I finished the entire challenge. All right, I gotta cool down and then we'll talk. Okay, what a challenge this one has been. It's actually been pretty great up until the end there. We're going to talk about that in just a minute here. We're also going to open this box and we're going to check out this awesome Frankenstein medal that's in here. I can't wait for you guys to see this thing. I haven't taken a close look at it myself yet either. It's been in the box since the day I bought it. But this has really actually been a pretty fun challenge. I had a great time filming in the cemetery, and it was so cool that we actually have a local cemetery that has Frankenstein's grave in it. Now, as I was walking around that cemetery, I was talking about this movie right here. The 1931, I believe it is, version of Frankenstein here with Boris Karloff playing Frankenstein's monster. Pretty good movie here. I actually watched it once I got home from the cemetery, and I do have to point out that I was wrong about the end. I was thinking that in the end, they drove him to the windmill or the lighthouse, whatever it was, and that they just kind of left him there, and they were like, okay, we got him, and they walked away. Because in some of these older movies, that's just like all they needed to do. They didn't feel a real need to give you a lot more information from that. They just kind of went, okay, the end. So I was wrong, though. I watched the movie, and they actually burn the windmill down. <laughs> So Frankenstein's monster is not getting back out to terrorize anybody else or to be terrorized himself. In addition, guys, we are actually doing this movie tonight for Saturday Night Snack and a Movie, which now is on its own channel. That channel is called 
Saturday Night Snack in a Movie. You can go over there right now and subscribe. This is Saturday Right Now. We actually have that brand new episode with Frankenstein going up in a few hours here. It may even be up by the time you see this video. But come on over there. We made some awesome snacks and it may have been one of the funniest episodes I've ever done as far as doing the snack section. Because let me tell you, the snack we're making I had some trouble with, but it ended up delicious in the end. Now, let's go ahead and open up this guy right here, and we're going to take a good look at this metal, and then we're going to talk about what happened in the end of this challenge here. So here we go, guys. I like these boxes. Like, inside the box, they have this nice little design here, and it kind of shows, you know, like the trail that you'd be taking in one of these challenges. I really think that's cool. They put a lot of good work into getting these things designed. So here it is, the Frankenstein's Trail Metal. Let's take it out of the plastic here. I also like that they put these two pieces of foam inside the box to kind of protect the metal. So here it is, we're opening it up for the first time. I love this. I love when I complete one of these challenges and I get to open the metal. Oh my gosh, this thing is so cool. Okay, first of all, here is the lanyard. It says Frankenstein's Trail, and look at that. Oh, <laughs> that is actually pretty spooky looking there. Pretty dang cool. Um, Pacer Virtual Challenges, Haunted Adventures, it says down there. This is what the front of it looks like here. Wow, let's see if I can get it to focus in on this instead of my face. Yeah, look at that. That is really cool right there. Frankenstein's Trail. And if I'm not mistaken, that is green. Let me put my glasses on here. I don't know why I just don't put my glasses on in the first place. Man, that is so awesome right there. Okay, and then we gotta look at the back here. Look at that, we got the brain. The brain on the back there. <laughs> and the whole contraption it looks like that he, uh, that the doctor lifts him up when it's lightning out. Oh my gosh, adventure challenge finisher. And look at this, this is a little magnet here. So you can take this off. I'll see what's on there in a second. But we can actually just look at this. So you can just focus on this right here. I wish I could get the camera to focus on it better. But uh, the back says pacer. You can see the two couple little magnets. And yeah, that goes right on the back of the metal there. And when you take that off, there's actually, it's kind of hard to tell what this is, but that looks like, it looks like a castle on there. I think that's what that is. It's supposed to be a castle, if you can even see that. It's kind of difficult to see. That is a pretty cool metal, though. I like that. And here's where it gets kind of strange. The metal itself says 54 miles down there at the bottom, if you can see that. Um, in the description on the app, it says 53 miles, but then when you're looking at the app itself, it says 53.4 miles. So there's three different places where it says how far this actual trail is. So what happened down towards the end here, as you saw, I actually did complete all 53.4 miles. Um, but when I set it up, I just kind of said, okay, we'll do this in two weeks. I figured I'd be done earlier. I set it up immediately after I finished the Pendle Witch Trail. I was so excited to get started, and I went head first at it. I was knocking out those miles. I think I had 30 miles done before I even went to the cemetery and filmed that segment. That's how excited I was to get this challenge going. As you move through your challenge on the app, you can see how many days you have left. And I gotta be honest, a couple of the days I kind of slacked off. I still walked, but I didn't walk as many miles as I had been each day. Some days I'd been doing like five, six miles. Some days I only did two. The whole point is to get me out and walking and moving and physically active each day. So it did keep me active with that. But down towards the end, I had a lot of miles left to go. I think I had 12 miles left to go. And I thought that I had two more days to go. And... I got in bed and I looked at the app one more time and then it said 24 hours to go and I'm like, oh crap, I have to do 12 miles in one day to complete this thing. So that's exactly what I did. The next day I just kept jumping on the treadmill and I'd do a few miles at a time. I'd do anywhere from like a half an hour to an hour at a time. 
maybe even a little bit more. And then I finished up one of my walks and I sat down. It's already 10.30 at night and I'm like, okay, I'm going to rest here for about 20 minutes and I'll get back on there and I'll just bang it out and get the rest of it done. I think I had just over three miles to go. So I rested a little bit. I got back on the treadmill, start hoofing it out. And I look at the thing and it had just said that I had two hours to go. And all of a sudden it said 57 minutes. And I'm like, what is going on here? Can I do three miles in 57 minutes? I was already exhausted. I had already done, what, nine miles for the day? Including everything else that I had to do through the day. Editing videos and filming videos. And I had to run over to my son's house. So I'm back on the treadmill and I'm just hoofing it out, man. Going as fast as I can without running. I do have that torn ACL in my left knee. I would like to get up to jogging at some point. But we'll just have to see how that goes. So I'm moving pretty fast on there and I'm watching the, the steps go and the miles and I'm watching the time count down and when it got to the end there the challenge ended at 52.9 miles the total challenge on the app was 53.4 miles so according to the time period that I set for myself I didn't complete it in that time period but the counter kept counting so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to complete it on my own. All I have to do is another half mile. So I kept going and kept going and kept going. I think it took another like 13, 1400 steps or something. And then I hit the half mile mark and I just about collapsed. I was so exhausted. But I did factually complete the whole 53.4 miles. So even though I didn't complete it within that time period that I specified, it was done within like, what, 10 minutes after that or something. So I'm still going to keep my medal. I'm still going to put it up here on the ghost face. And we're going to call this one done. So stay tuned, guys. Because we still have five more pacer challenges to do. We're going to do one more. And then we're going to do the Michael Myers 10K. And then we're going to get busy with the other four. 